That's why I doesn't like it because they investigate it and then they, if they find a lot of things going on, it's really not good for the, yeah, good, good to the supervisors. And, <clears throat> and um, do you know how important is the human yeah, relationship is? And then in terms of vision, and we sending out a lot of, yeah, church is sending out a lot of missionaries to organization, and but more than 60% yeah, the mission of the, those who are coming back to their home country, uh, they stop. Yeah, they stop the ministry and then coming back to their yeah, home country and then come back to their work. You know why? And the one of the biggest reason more than sixty percent that there is a conflict between the, yeah among the people. Yeah, so it's very really hard to deal with this matter. Why right? it's difficult to. Uh, even though it's a Christian or yeah, even though it's a Christian organization and then they got yeah, they this they they yeah, a lot of missionaries think that they got called to serve others in cross cultural context and then they got there and then, but not the with the complete way what well, the local people but complete with the what well, people who stand by the church are the missionaries. It's really funny, huh? <clears> the <throat> yeah, so human relationship is really important, whether it's a Christian organization or not. And so, if you go to school, if you think about this elementary school and junior high school and high school itself, you cannot see the human resources. But if you go up to district level, and there's a human resources department. Because if you go to district and then several and elementary and junior high school, they, are, they supervise in elementary and well, junior high school, high school. But if you go to college and there is a human, yeah, human resources department. And when you run your know, operate school and then think about how can you uh, how can you lead the people, right? If if something's happen and then like the racial issues and sexual harassment issues and other worker complaint, and how can you deal with it? So that's why today uh, we're gonna. That's another area that you, we, the, as a leader, as an administrator, think about the human. Yeah, human relationship uh, in order to operate school. <clears throat> Before I go to the, this topic and remember, we learn about different kind of the yeah, leadership leadership style and transactional leader style and yeah, traditional leader, leadership style. And, yeah, transactional. I give you yeah a little bit. Yeah, or it's a little bit, what is this, like a punishment, based on the punishment reward, reward. And then we talk about transformational leadership and we talk about server root. I don't talk about much about that one. And then we talk about and <clears throat> group, yeah, group leadership. And what, just trying to remember what, yeah, what the roles of the leaders in, the yeah uh, roles are what the role, yeah, roles of the leaders are usually if you if you are leader in company or organization and then what you have to manage whole things even though you don't do the specific things but you gotta you have something yeah whole pictures in your mind to each department and you gotta you couldn't get the report from each department or other. That's why you gotta like if you become a CEO of the company like that, right? Even though maybe school setting is a little bit smaller than other, but if you, you are the you are the administrator at school and then you are the leader, right? And then think about how you manage the school. And that's a leader's role. And then 
Well, how can you give the instruction to coworkers, yeah, the coworkers and um, other administrators and staff and the teachers, right? And even to the children, yeah, student. And there's a lot of interpersonal task. You gotta communicate with the others, you know, planning and and some program and what well, budgeting and if you wanna develop the any policies and then you gotta talk and if you wanna uh, form the really really nice uh, sound nice uh, cultural environment and then we gotta communicate very well. That is a leader's job and then so leaders shape values and then develop visions and what. Well and create meaning you know they use a lot of symbolic communication in there and uh, develop the unique culture based on their moral values and so basically that those are they are basically leaders job but even though they try to do this kind of work and they rock they still it's not easy it's a lot of jugglings and struggling with others because of the personal relationship with others, right? And here is a basic uh, concept of the, the human relationship and how they develop in the United States. It's not the long, like a company, yeah, it's not the long, yeah, there is not a long, yeah, long history compared with the other stuff. And then there is, yeah, like, on, yeah, before 30s and then and what is that one? Usually they really emphasize about classical, yeah, uh, classical economic theory and the scientific movement. It means that, and how can you give the, ins yeah, how can you give the kind of incentive to the workers and then, and how can, so that they can, yeah, contribute yeah, the incentives are uh, contributed to the, their need right and how can really uh, focus on the rest efficiency and productivity that's uh, yeah, around the um, uh, 30s and they don't think about much about the environment and a more spiritual job in the workplace and Really, they did a classical basic, yeah, classic economic theory and efficiency and productivity. And what right about next, around the 90, yeah, 1932, 50s, uh, they developed a little bit different way. What is the systematic development? And then really focus on the rights of workers' of dignity and values. And so, when they talk about the productivity and then concern about social and psychological interaction among the human resources and how can they consider the human being psychological and social being right human so at the time so informal social structure kind of influence they influence a lot the product we yeah, are to the productivity behavior so try to think about how can we value how can we respect the human dignities and the what and then values that is around the and uh 30 to 50s and then 50 to 60 around the time And rest of all, and the social and psychological needs for the workers was seen as a significant determinant of behavior. More emphasized, it kind of uh, is extended from the previous stage, but still really emphasized. And then, so how can they can get the uh, freedom to socialize on the job and participate in many decisions? Uh, workers and have more freedom to uh, in, uh, uh, like informal relationship with their uh, work, yeah, co-workers and then workers not the 
um, all policies and management universal. Yeah, uh, management is by the management group, but still try to get to, uh, inv uh, involved in all process because they want to reflect the uh, worker's perspective. So uh, they are uh, respecting uh, result, yeah, yeah, result, respecting to resulting greater daily satisfactions and increase yeah, what? Well, if workers have great yeah, satisfaction and then um, the, uh, once the outcome is what? Well, maybe they assume that work will work harder and then well, increase the performance and then higher productivity. So that's a really, really optimistic view on the human nature. They rely on human beings. But, at that time, they don't, they don't think about the human what, morality. And around the 50s and 70s and 90s and 2020s, when you compare the morality, it's totally different. But they, they are really optimistic. And then what about our, our we find that it's around 60 and 70, and then they said that we find a bit, yeah, improve more, and then work is not inherently distasteful. Maybe let's think about work can give the meaning of life, and then maybe they can achieve something, and they can, yeah, uh, provide the need from the work and the work. So people want to contribute to meaningful goal. And then they said that right at the time in the supportive climate ensure that numbers in the organization will feel a sense of personal worth and then importance in, in all their interactions and relationships with the organizations will really focus on the workers. Right? Maybe even more. That's why and and toy, yeah, toys and hammer, hammers and then once a day um, and when the continence model is the organization, the yeah, organization system or you know, behavior compose or think about big system is here and then contingency is connected to subsystems and they are uh, together. And but each system has their own boundary, but uh, yeah, what's up? After all, still, or what's up, that runs as a big system. That is a kind of, yeah, a little bit develop more and organize more at the time. So, can you see that how the management is going, uh, what's up, the, the, how they, how the, what's up, companies and organizations and consider the, what's up, human relationship? In the beginning, 30 and 50 and 70 is a little bit different, right? And getting more, well, so not that just a human being like a machine and product produce something like sitting there work for that and then they can produce something, but think about humans making need and meaning of life, right? Through the work. But 70 to 80s and the what? Our focus are yeah, really at the time and not the focus on the what? Uh, worker, but focus on the leadership. That's why a little bit uh, uh, kind of yeah, uh, touch the, yeah, did, yeah, a um, little bit of uh, left uh, behind the, uh, or topics, but still, or uh, 70s, 80s, and no, it's not a workers uh, in my remote world countries, but really uh, focus on the communicate, yeah, leadership. How can they communicate? How can motivate people? What kind of leadership is really effective in these yeah, organizations like this? And the communication, planning, and making decisions and evaluation really focus on that one. But, like uh, uh, 80, 
to present you know, present, you know, present and then there is a still evolving and then uh, they talk about the leadership and they talk about a uh, working environment and then but still there is a little unique perspective uh, from the collective society from the Japan and usually in individual Western uh, Western organization is really talk about some management from the what, top to bottom even though they try to reflect all things about okay if you work for this one I pay for it right that's kind of a big in mind but right so in uh, theory Z and I would just say that the you know, they really Japanese company at the time so um, uh, really focus on the device about quality of work, you know, workers life and then collective decision making and what well, they got a lot of uh, 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 perspective from the workers and then what well, responsibility and then lifetime employment so they don't, they don't uh, if you work for us and okay you can work for your life and then that is kind of a responsibility or accountability but Western company not that way right and okay if you have a high performance in the previous year from the previous year, uh, organization you can jump off and go and go and try to increase productivity right efficiency but that is in Japan in the like 80s and they have a totally different perspective you know, among organizations and then and but they cannot see but still uh, they take care of the workers family and workers and then well you know you cannot see but trying to control the people top bottom is a western style is a little bit different give try to give them a lot of what uh, like freedom and try to involve in the what and making this is in process but and workers are a little bit uh, more uh, responsibility but still this uh, uh, model uh, theory Z and then we cannot see but control from top and and that is yeah different difference yeah it's a little bit different from the western organization but based on that one they developed their organization but nowadays Japan you know, Japan is yeah they so uh, they developed their little bit think about more and then changing now but Western companies try to just think about nowadays I don't know which model is really good and then still based on the performance right based on the performance and yeah that is a basic uh, uh, kind of a uh, brief overview of the how uh, the organization uh, developed the human relationship What is a human relationship? What is a human relations? And here is a, let's think about some definition and then move on. And definition is a yeah, salt, yeah, salt and stir is a salt and stir said that the study of the people in the study of the people uh, at work, at work. The human relations. So not only people as individual, but people as a member of an informal work group, informal work group we're gonna talk about, and then people as executives in the management, all the way top, and people as a union members who try to represent the workers, and then people who members of organization with the economic goals, and then that is a study of our people in the workplace. That's uh, that's the uh, human relations, and Scott and 
is an effective motivation of individual in given station or situation to achieve a balanced object, achieve the need greater satisfaction and help accomplish organizational goal. Also, as it is, effective motivations of individual. It draws what? Uh, if you create a satisfaction of the work and the work, how to accomplish the organizational goal. That's understanding of the human relations. That's a motivation. That's a human being. What about babies? Interaction with people in all kinds of endeavors, business and government, social clubs, and schools and homes. Interaction with people. Human relations. And so our textbook and Razik and Swanson said that the study of the human behavior and work, which is not a, just a, what about, it seems like the yeah, same as psychology, but what is the difference? And work, not just a limit to the working environment, right? And on an effort to take action in operating situation in order to produce a greater result. So study about what people and work why to take action in operating what situation to yeah uh, produce a better result. So why do you have to study about people? And there is an organization goal to achieve, right? You gotta connect. You gotta connect. And when we think about uh, over the human relations, there is a three aspects there: human nature, and then clinical dimensions, and ethical dimensions. What is a human nature? How do you think a human is like? It's good. Bad or neutral? And like, uh, yes, do you know, uh, like uh, 40s and uh, go to 50s, and then and when they think about human relationship, human rela relations, and then they are really optimistic in that uh, human nature and aspect of human nature, human have ability to whatever they want to do. But if you see the human being, in yeah, or if you understand the human being uh, through the Christianity, it's a little bit different. And here is and human nature. So how can we understand the people? So uh, individual differences and but who can see the whole person, right? Not the human being has a lot of different yeah, uh, aspect. Uh, if you take if you take was a was a personality test and then a trait test and then you can see how uh, you can see how you are like that's a that. Result to show the tendency, not exactly who you are. But still, uh, sometimes I don't believe the kind of your test because human beings kind of yeah, respond to different to the different situation, right? Or uh, respond differently to the different situation. And then okay, sometimes it's a hard that's why see the, the test to see the kind of tendency. Not the who you are like this, and like this. Uh, you gonna see the one part of you, and when you think about yourself and how you have a lot of different aspect of, aspect of yourself. Sometimes it's hard to define who you are because sometimes I feel like this, sometimes like this, but sometimes I don't know who I am like this. But trying to see the human being whole being. Whole being, not in one aspect. 
and cause their yeah, cause the behavior you know how what contributed to yeah behave like that and then human dignity is that human nature they think about human natures and what about the clinical dimensions and then what and when they were you yeah, know when they were getting them up and they they used to use tools and data to solve the concrete human problem in situation they occur right think about when you work yeah, in an organization and then there's a lot of tools out there and sometimes questionaries and sometimes counseling and right that's a clinical dimension what about the ethical dimension ethical dimension is like person's morality and organization morality is the ethical dimension is the personal freedom and the yeah, preeminence of individual action and affirmation of a value of a human being a human collaboration and so solidarity that is a, how can you behave how you how you think right in organization in in the workplace like this and that is a kind of way of when you think about human relationship as human nature and then uh, clinical dimensions and the what ethical dimension even though uh, when you draw pictures and then that is a relate to your work in yeah uh, uh, what is in uh, relate to the uh, work yeah kind of work as goals who they are how can you treat them? When they have a problem at school, how can you help them? Right? That's a clinical dimension and because of why? You can figure it out, your values. And then if value is not sound, then how can you how can you redirect as an administrator, as a leader, redirect to the value that you are pursuing at school? There is a kind of a theoretical uh, perspective in about human nature, and then um, here is a uh, uh, theory X and theory Y. Is uh, uh, he, that is a uh, Mac Rivers. He said that this kind of uh, he divided two categories and this yeah this group of yeah, time and yeah, x time and y time the assumption of the yeah, theory x x and then here it is an everyday employee is extremely does not like work everyday people they don't want to work but try to escape you whenever possible. I can see a lot of people and at churches and at, yeah, my wife told me all the time, she doesn't wanna, her whole co-worker doesn't wanna work and just to leave it. And then who, next person who will take your yeah, co-worker so has to work. Even at church too, any organization, right? Hey, some people really work hard, some people oh, oh, just follow, some people try to not to do that, try to take advantage of the others. That kind of, yeah, hey, that's an X. And since employee does not want to work, he must be persuaded, compelled, about work with the punishment so as to achieve organization goal. You got to push them. If you don't, you will, you you may get you know, fired, right? Like that. And close your yeah, close supervision is required because if you, you, your eyes are from the later world, then they the mean they are the efficiency and productivity is kind of a decrease because of them, right? And on the part of the manager, the manager about to move. Dictate, yeah, dictatorial style. Okay, because you are to push them and command them, and, right? And that's just, yeah, theory X. And then many employees wrap the job security on top. 
they uh, was a rent and they have a little no inspiration ambitions. Already they're scared and there's no uh, horizontal relationship at work. And they want employee generally dislike the responsibility because they don't want to work. And some people, my wife told me that some people, yeah, it's a working environment, it's different and they work as easy stuff. My office is pharmacist and doctor only yeah. Doctor orders a lot of work and um, uh, orders for patients and then when they have a pool and some people say take the easy one. When they turn it's the a hard stuff, they don't do it until someone takes the hard one like that. No responsibility. And sometimes patients are really in urgent, urgency and really urgent, but they don't care. They don't send medication. It's very really dangerous, right? If we work in medical field, which is very dangerous. Like an employee reaches the change, because if you change and you better work on and you need to work more, and then every employee needs formal directions. In the, or you gotta do it, it's not an informal. If A is informal, then it will work. There is a time X. And there is your personal time, time X and you know, yeah, A and B like that, and then time Y is the yeah, solution of time Y, and here it is. Employees can pursue the job relaxing and normal a different attitude. They exercise their physical and mental yeah, effort in inherent manner in the job. Okay? They try to work, figure it out, and take care of their work. And the employee may not require only direct external control and coercion to work, but they can use self-direction and self-control if they are dedicated since to achieve the organizational objectives. So, it uh, depends on, uh, just think about hospital. There's a lot of accidents and people, yeah, even people don't have good insurance and they don't want to do much work. I experienced it. And before I had HMO and then I go to the doctor, I have a problem here and then my shoulder is not good and then he said, oh, that's a stress. Uh, yeah, he didn't even try, yeah, try to take an x-ray and that's stress because if he does do that, he did do that and what, he's not going to pay the by insurance, that's why. And like this, and then if the job is really satisfying, then you will be able to enforce loyalty and commitment to the organization. That's a totally and because the ability, yeah, average employee can learn, admit, and recognize their responsibility, and they can be learned to obtain responsibility. So employees, uh, employees have a skills or capability. Uh, their logical capability should be fully utilized. In other words, creativity and resourcefulness and innovation pot yeah, pot yeah, potentiality of employees can be utilized to solve the organization problem. It means that the workers that are involved in the organization and that they use their skills and their yeah, capabilities. That is our solution of theory B. And then good things mutual is better. It's a stupid question, right? And yeah, that's why I try to understand what, uh, yeah, theory X and then theory Y. That's the organization. So ritually is, is better and more outcomes and, but yeah, uh, then yeah, to produce more, uh, uh, effectively, right? So what does it mean that X, Y theories? 
x y theory, right? You can see that uh, basically in x y theory is uh, yeah, theory axis is yeah, encouraged to use of a tight control and supervision. And what about theory y and encourages determination of authority and uh, decentralization and then they know what they need to do and then they can take care of the work. That's why decentralization of authority and then they have to work together, teamwork and participate, participate decision making in organizations. It's a totally different way. So it depends on what kind of work you work and then what kind of your uh, skills and then uh, leadership you can employ. Right? It's not just to do that and think about if you are leaders and if you are the was a, uh, administrator and then theory is there and then you can, you're going to know that your staff workers and teachers, how can you manage human resources? That's a wonderful way to kind of understand people. Here is another theory. It's a, a Pygmalion leadership and from the book. Uh, so, Pygmalion effect is a type of a self, yeah, it's a self fulfilling purpose in which raising manager expectation regarding the subordinate, subordinate performance boost for subordinate performance. If you have a greater expectation and the what? Uh, the, and, and you can get more outcome. So, Maybe, maybe there is a oh, person is expectancy is there, but if you don't provide anything and just expect something greater, and then they're not gonna be, yeah, the workers are gonna be frustrated. But that's why I mean the consistent support, the encouragement, and reinforce of the high expectation of followers. And then you're gonna get the higher productivity. Here is here. And your expectation is here, right? And it's, yeah, expectation is a high and low. And then, and expectation is a high and provides more feedback. Now like, oh, you gotta do this one and kind of uh, yeah, adjust a little bit and then expectation will be higher and then invest the what? In workers training. You got more time and you gotta support more. And here it is. Create a support climate between leaders and followers and then provide a challenge task. It's not a just to um, expectation and kind of move in a little bit more and more and then provide a challenge task. How can you do that? Not easy. So if you mean they hire me, they what? Invest in worker training. You want to train them how to yeah, provide the skills and knowledge. That's a higher expectation. Challenge is not itself. What about the climate support, the climate between the leaders and followers? But it's not just support. We got to know what, what's going on. So it's a simple, you know, uh, big value and leadership stuff. Yeah, leadership. And think about how can you use this model at school, yeah, to run schools as an organization. What's the expectation? There's a lot of research that said that if you don't have a higher performance at schools, school is not doing their work very well. So, the expectation of performance is very important too. And uh, how can you do that? High expectation. Okay, let's raise the performance. Our school is a standard test, is like 700, and some school is more than 900. How can you in, yeah, like a, like a raise up to the what? 
این حال اون نداره میگن هم کارت این کارتی هستون میگن هم کارت ما کوید چی چه؟ میگن هم ما کوید و هو ستف هو سپرین تیتر و سنسورن میگن هم ما کوید و پیرنس و کمیونیتی and we don't want the district like this and if you have high expectation and then we what uh could uh was a challenge to challenge the you know others what to uh perform yeah better then so Pygmalion uh, effect. There is a human base of the human nature, uh, expectation and the law. And then X, Y, Z is a base of the human nature. And these sort of, uh, and then think about human motivations. How can you understand the human relations? Human motivation. There's a lot of uh, uh, theories. I'm gonna just introduce the theories, and then here it is an expectancy, yeah, expectancy model of motivation. And in the expectancy model, I believe that individual choose their behavior based on what, yeah, based on what they believe leads to most beneficial outcome. Always think about what's the benefit for me. Right? So here is uh, basically, okay, um, what we need to do. How can we work? There's an effort. Um, and think about, we can see, perceive the result. We can see that the uh, effort performance probability, how much we need to do to get this one, right? So if I work hard, will I get the job done? Like this. Really not. Uh, if I work hard, study hard, will I get a good grade? I can get a, well, uh, if usually I just have a passing grade, if I get a B and A. And here is next level is a performance and procedural performance, a real possibility. Probability, okay. If I perform very well, then there is a lot of way that symbolic communication and actions in the school. So right, and here, okay, can I get reward? Here's a now think about what reward I can get. Uh, will I get when my job is done well? Perform. And then reward is there. A perceived valuable reward. If I get this year a reward, and then how am I recognized others? Pride. Intended. All kind of things. And then and perceived valuable reward. And what will do I value? What will? That is an expectancy of yeah, model of your motivation, and then there is a uh, you gotta do some job. And how can we start? And then perform and think about what what I'm gonna get after that. What kind of will is there? That's an expectancy model. And here is uh, a part of the model of motivations. And this is really good for the uh, directive and supportive and particip yeah, participative and achievement leadership style. And that means that you're going to work, it's not a formal, it's a, yeah, it's a better informal setting. And here's kind of a complicated diagrams and here. Start number one. 
okay, before you start, what is the value of yeah, what is the value of reward? If I work hard, what is the benefit for me? What kind of value I can have? And then, okay, this work, think about how can, yeah, this kind of reward is achieved, yeah, goals and a lot of different things, right? Depends on, and then perceive the effort, real the possibility, okay? If I work hard, then there is some reward, possibility. Think about possibility, and then people work hard, effort. And then there is a ability and trait. People's ability is different. Their trait is different. We already learned about type X and Z. And then think about goal perception. And performance, yeah, accomplishment. They all work together. And ability trait and what kind of work I have to do. And then Performance and account, there is all put together as a, in the organization. And what comes out? If you work in the days, why is it self motivated? I'm going to achieve this because I'm going to show something. I have abilities, and this shows my aim of life, like intrinsic work. Just stop. So I have a job done, and then what? You have a satis yeah, satisfaction. And then extra, what is the company going to give you? What is the organization's yeah, reward? Right? And then, look at this. So this one is kind of possible. Yeah, equitable reward is just a fair. Right? And all put together, all put together, and then job done and then you go all the way, go back, kind of this one is it. You can go back here, and then if you think about and then perceive the, yeah, kind of it, yeah, think of remember and put together, and then you always think about satisfaction of the, the value of the, well, uh, reward. And if you have it, they are motivated. And they will work hard in the way. Little bit complicated uh, models, but still uh, think about how you can uh, motivate people. Start with what? The value of a reward. Right? So, and people are kind of voluntarily and they are responsible and they work hard with their skills and abilities. And how can we reward kind of people? So we are talking about, yeah, we already talked about the how can we reward the students, like a symbolic actions, communications, right? Like that. And that's a third uh, teachers recognition day and as a staff recognition day. And, like this, and we were just uh, what kind of world we can set. And if they uh, perceive the reward and then and possibility, right? Real possibility they work on and then how can we help them, yeah, how can we um, how can kind of the reward kind of yeah, make them satisfied, right? That is true. Yeah. So if they put a lot of effort and, and show them maybe bigger reward and then maybe step by step depends on how the leaders uh, run the uh, operate the organization. There is a behavior model and think about this behavior resume is that. Uh, behavior essentially determined by the environment through the basic reinforcement process. That is a major understanding of behaviorism. So there is an external stimulation, it's like environmental stimulation is then respond to what? Behavior is 
this you know all these balances and then there's always outcomes that the baby you know paradigm of behavior but the important thing is the what behavior is you know determined by the environment that is kind of you know you can know the ones intrinsic motivations or is out extrinsic purpose and extrinsic motivation so nowadays the school is a lot of that one if you are too hard and too a lot in it they will that is based on the, the concept they don't think about internal motivation but social learning is the okay uh, it's the same but there is the uh, you gotta consider you gotta think and then respond there's a cognitive processes in here people uh, to see the environment also yeah and the student learns environment student then you gotta see you gotta learn right that's why the social learning is about modeling is a very important so behaviorism is there's no cognition thinking about the process but that is, you got to see and learn what to do, how to do, and then learn the process. That is, a modeling is a learning behavior by imitating optimal. That is, a, a, a social learning yeah, theories. So, a lot of you yeah, just think about it's not all oh, this one this one it's a perfect this one this perfect this one this theory is perfect and this theory is not but always uh, the words as a leader always think about the your context school's culture school's direction right <coughs> And there is a kind of your content model, so how to satisfy yourself. And then I know that you guys and very uh, knows very well. This is uh, Maslow's uh, need hierarchy. And here's a physiological uh, need and safety need and long belong to need and estimate need and self actualization need. That's how much you are content with. Compared to the physiological love and free uh, kind of food, water, and sex, sleeping, and home homeostasis, and excretion, all kinds of physiological. Sometimes your body does, and eating, drinking, all kinds of stuff. Sex, a little bit higher. And security, body, employment, and resources, and morality, and family, health, properties, and then religious uh, safety. What if, what if I get fired? My, what if my family are kind of struggling with the finance? Not willing to go to this. There is no safety, right? And loving and belonging need. You are loved by friends and families and good relationship with them, and right? And sexual intimacy, and then, yeah, sexual relationship with your partner. And what about Eastern? And based on that one, and then think about who you are. Your Eastern is low in the world. You don't have any confidence. But your Eastern is high, and then you are very confident. Like the South Eastern, confidence, achievement, respect others, and respect by others. What about self actualization? Higher content. Just uh, you have your own things, right? So it depends on the people's levels here and then really uh, stop the some materialistic. And then this one is a really big think about human relationship. And even though this level is a really yeah, materialistic level. And then look at this uh, self actualization, self motivating, and you are satisfied with what you have done. That Maslow, yeah. Uh, and Adolfer has different one. Think about yeah, Maslow's hierarchy need and the, but uh, 
this yeah uh either for is what uh e r g theories and then the safety and theoretically the existence for basic living as a thing and then as a belonging is kind of what relate what uh relation of relatedness friend family and sexual relationships and then so what is the self-actualization and this term is a growth, personal growth, how you can grow. It's not just to, um, when that's basically maybe if you don't have good environment from the beginning and then it's, you gotta pay for it, develop yourself and esteem and self-actualization growth, right? So make it a little bit simplified by yeah, yeah, uh, Adelford. That is a uh, uh, motivations, and then here is yeah, another uh, social motivations. Uh, Mac, yeah, Macleland. Macleland's here. And he said every person is one of the three main driving motivators. One of the three and need for achievement and affiliation or power there is a three dynamics there to what a drug people's yeah, behavior right and this motive is not inherited it's kind of developed and so people can develop what well, through the culture and life experience That's true. Who has really uh, a power, salvation, and then they want to get it. And here it is, and need for achievement. How can you achieve? They, they have kind of a low motivation, it's always uh, uh, low in the rock. They fear the failure. But if they have a high and high is the one and will be hope for the success. Okay, I'm not achieve this and I'm not in success. Successful, right? Different. What about the need for affiliation? How can we get along with others that are really people oriented? Right? And motivated high and the one harmony. Okay, get along with the others, you know, this is different, but what's more is motivated as and they don't have any motivation is to think about, okay, I don't, I don't want to be alone, which is more comfortable, which is, yeah, I'm okay with that one, you want social distance. Maybe these people is like intrinsic people, maybe, uh, these people is kind of uh, really uh, outgoing and people like that. What about the, the power? Motivated high like dictators in other countries, right? Different political system and then dictators and try to control the courts. What about law and if you don't, and then power and you want to depend on others because you want to be powerful. That is the uh, 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 McLean's uh, need theories. Another yeah, uh, theory is that was uh, uh, a uh, territorial theory, and this one is a uh, human being, like a human being, and yeah, no, as a uh, and arteries and then arteries see the human being as an, like animals and then are uh, compelled by instinct to possess and defend the territory they believe it belongs exclusively to them right how can we keep my territory how can yeah how can i get my territory so if you watch the animal world, you, know, you can see that the territories they always be trying to defend. 
someone is yeah, coming to her and then almost expel. That is territory. That is a human instinct. They yeah, already say that. There is a lot of motivation. Yeah, people motivate. Yeah, motivating people, right? And there is a baby uh, idea about the motivation, yeah, theories, and then what about just up to you and then we feel you know a lot of stuff and then think about it's not absolute true but there's a study by people and then who can get some principle to your own leadership yeah to our own leadership when we yeah when we run yeah after in schools but there is a little bit different aspect of our motivation at work. How can people motivate by at work? And like X and Y theories, and then there is a yeah, uh, uh, head work and two factor principle theories. Yeah, job satisfaction theory yeah, and, and job dissatisfaction. And satisfaction is what? Job satisfaction is like um, really think about influence by motivator factors. Okay. What kind of motivator? And then they have. And they are satisfied with reward and with what they got. Right? And maybe uh, job satisfaction is like motivators, like achievement, like salaries, bonus, working environment, and recognition, and responsibility. What kind of responsibility they have to do it? And then if I have the responsibility yeah, done, and then what kind of happens? Well, work itself, advancement, and personal growth. Yeah, these are all like like a uh, personal uh, friendly benefit and work and like this, yeah, you know, higher motivation things and they were motivated people and then they are satisfied, like uh, theory wise. What about this one? Job yeah yeah the so basically and they're improving what the motivator factors increasing job satisfaction. So, how can we uh, provide better um, uh, what is the working environment and reward or stuff that people can they uh, use their ability and skill or achieve something, achieve their objectivities and their goals? Good old what job, right? That is the important thing. And then. What about this dissatisfaction and is a height factors? This he said the height factors, and that that's why the uh, uh, high work motivator and height height effect yeah, theory. There is some motivators and there is a height. Okay, think about yeah working condition condition is not that good. So I mean that I work hard but they pay less and. It's too no easy and there is no uh, is a support like this. Working condition and workers' relation. So people are really bad and I don't want to read others. And then policies and rules are too much and there's no freedom. And then uh, supervisor quality, they are not good quality as supervisors and, and base wages and salary. All kinds of this one is a fact to what? Hygiene, they say hygiene and affect the job satisfaction. So, how can we uh, hygiene the yeah, factors uh, decrease job satisfaction? And how can we improve the, these factors? And there is a kind of a motivation theory at work. Makes sense, huh? Depends on people how they think about, right? There's a motivator, motivators and hygiene. So you gotta kind of groom up and then brush off and then uh, keep moving, yeah, help them to move on. So 
there is another theory there from our books, and then and usually I have a book, but there is no diagram, and I got it from the book. Already someone knew who enjoyed it. Uh, so very so. Uh, it's not uh, yeah, always uh, this uh, factor is here. Uh, uh, you can see just uh, how a lot of different factors that uh, people motivate, right? Uh, it's a different. But this one is not always limited to some yeah, item, you know, the factors, and then who can do the higher salaries, and like this. There is other factors, and you can do it, add it. Sharmir, a uh, collective work motivation. And uh, he said that uh, there is an, uh, three aspects of motivation is a bad border value based, it, and then motivation and the uh, uh, calculative motivations and then uh, express and maintenance uh, yeah, motivations. And he said that work motivated, what is the values? What, what are they pursuing? How are they pursuing? Value, relate to value. This one is a collective society and then we use the uh, calculative control. Well, so there is a self-efficacy and then collectivity, you know, collective efficacy, and then okay, how can you do it? Can you do can you have any uh do you believe that you have any ability to do that? What about our community, our organizations, and social rewards and sanctions? Any reward? Collective mean that. So group and community, right? And collective into your know, outcomes and individual reward. So how can that one is more values express and then calculate concerns express and influence each other and then eventually it's motivating people. It makes sense though if you uh, from the collective society, right? And I'm, I'm from Korea, and then our values are very different. Organization values, personal values are very different. They don't put the always person, they put the uh, organization. Think about family, think about right, others. And calculative consideration. How it affect me and affect other communities and organizations, and what is the benefit? And this is yeah, benefit and other this one advantage. And what about how this one is uh, express maintain our identity, so group identity, right? Even though you have uh, unique things, uh, sometimes you don't. Stick out and just put it aside. Just follow the groups. That's your group identities. That's a collective. Yeah, but, but if you are in, in as a Western society, uh, organization, uh, uh, society and grew up and then uh, work within the Western organization and then Maybe it's a different nowadays. It's a they try to develop a lot of different things, and I'm not. Yeah, I I don't remember. Yeah, if I shared my daughter's yeah working place in this class, but still, and they try to uh, make a good like yeah, motivators and. Uh, and hygiene, they're based on their own, maybe, and and they try to make a lot of you know, uh, good, uh, try to make a good environment for workers. So there is a deadline of the work. They need to, yeah, they have a job done. Yeah, each stage, but. When you go to office and they're really nice and they are welcome all the time and they have a social lunch and they have, they have volunteers and 
all the kind of activity and they have some yeah, kind of incentive, you know, Christmas and other time and then like this. It's not a big thing. It's not a big thing, but still remember. And last time she called me that and then, Daddy, my company and gave this one and this item is a ritual they like. Like this, right? And now it's, it's a little bit different, but there is a usually uh, the company tried to build up the door as a uh, uh, as a team or like a group. It's a, it's not a the collective, but it's a you know work as a group, teams, right? And that is a kind of you know, uh, I really impressed with the you know, when you get your company where my daughter is working at. So you gotta think of, yeah, we already talked about the basic uh as a definition of a human relations and then we're gonna talk about the human being and then uh, natures and motivations. And then what about uh so right so motivations relate to the lots of clinical aspect and then why nature is real or kind of people and then and this one is moral, this is really about the also ethical aspect, dimension. Moral, and it's like people uh, try to uh, have myself already and create a kind of your, uh, have here is a definition is here moral is a atmosphere called yeah, created by the attitude of members of organization is more likely revealed by group than individual. So influence how employee perceive the organization's role. And there's a more direction and not the moral. Moral is kind of basic lessons and then uh, uh, from the yeah. Uh, learn something and you have basic lessons and then yeah, that one is it gives you basic principle to do, right? Behave, morale. So approaches here, yeah, there are three approaches in uh, this area and uh, physiological approaches and satisfaction of the basic human need of survival and how can you, that is a, you gotta, uh, that is a morale, yeah. How can we survive? Related to the kind of physical aspect. And then what about psychologically, how can you satisfy yourself? This level and another level and another like mass levels and, you know, at, at average, right? Different level. And what about social? Social that's a social aspect, you know, for the social phenomena because like people's strong desire to be associated with other people, other people. So usually you know, study by three aspects. But three aspects, we cannot separate each aspect, but they study about each aspect, but when you think about morals, and then we cannot uh, separate each by each in, you know, the relationship is indispensable, right? But it's easy to understand. So talk about the morale and then here's a cause and said okay, whether uh, if you think about morale and you gotta think about the aspect, it really contribute to morale. The principle of behave and then, yeah, um, norms, right? How can company kind of directions and where's the basic this ethics, you know, ethics. Like um, when they got the goal and how they could carry out the goals like this. That's moral. And Peer spectrum is the organization self. What is the organization? 
or as a barriers, or as a goals? And what about the, their own activities? And there's a lot of activities, right? And workers have a lot of activities. Think about. And the, the think about the activity, how can we do that? It will reflect the morals or it will reflect that. No. But what about self concept? People's workers' self concept, how they think about themselves, what about self wisdom, low or high or moderate? And what about nature of the work? It really gives a kind of a moral direction. And what about their peer? How do you behave? It's a really important factor to yeah, evaluate the morals and and to yeah, have the yeah, develop the morals. And then what about satisfaction satisfaction with their needs? And then if you are not satisfied with your work and then yeah, so there is no like a type A, right? No responsibilities and then they don't know work and like this. And what about it? Then it's hard to yeah, leadership. What kind of leadership style is it? So yeah, style is employed by humble organizations. And what kind of yeah, members are you are already talk about, right? Is the leadership is a, is, is a well matched with the right? companies. There's a lot of different aspects to you know, influence on the morals. So think about when we go to school and then uh, how they, uh, what kind of moral they have, what is the basic principle of behavior, right? Then so you can see that that aspect, you can see uh, check that area and then you can understand. Here is kind of a uh, aspect of moral job satisfaction and productivity. And then if you have moral and think about, and if you have a reasonable and good moral, and then how can it influence your productivity? If you don't, there is no principles of the behaviors, and then it's hard. Here is a study of employee morals, and, and there is a three aspect in analyzing organization report for changes in investigation, targeting, absentees, and productivity, and complaint. And you can see that the morals. What kind of you know, ethical mentality they have? And what about interviewing with the employees using you know, prepared questions and allow employees to respond in constructive format? And you can see interview is a very good way there. And basic question you have about the best on the question, you can extend the unstructured. What do you mean during un, you know, unsigned question release? And then yeah, reporting more than times. That is a kind of yeah, you can way that you can understand the employees morale. And that's a gives the kind of yeah, depends on what kind of morale you have, attitude, yeah, and then gives them a lot of quality of the work. And just think about, I'm not kind of look, yeah, downgrade under the uh, uh, product from the other countries, and then like from, there is a different uh, product, so you know, product from the USA, product from the China, which one you guys are valuing?
I don't mean that every you know, factory or organization in China kind of don't have good morals. But sometimes, uh, I don't know whether you guys yeah, shop on the, yeah, Amazon, and a lot of products that come from different countries, and sometimes I know some uh, product is kind of yeah, broke, yeah, it's broke all the way, but some product I consider was it originally is broken, but they send it out. Right? That's a related to you know, uh, moral. And there is another topic that we're going to think about the, uh, uh, when we talk about the human relation with the informal organization. What is the informal organization? There's a formal organization, so there is a hierarchy, and you got to have your own position and job done, right? And there is an informal organization is like this, and then it's a more freedom and more uh, kind of give, uh, give more responsibility on the workers. And here it is. Uh, so network of the personal and social rela relations are not necessarily required by formal authority, but arise as spontaneous as people associated with one another. That's informal. Uh, like uh, my daughter's workplace is a very informal. Sometimes and they are not the kind of a uh, uh, stream order and chain. I know they they need when they yeah, communicate with the supervisor. There's a chain of order, but uh, it's a really casual and and. Sometimes it's a, when the director came down and they have a tea time informally, not there is a hierarchy, right? And here is the uh, why is an informal organization is really uh, important is a uh, rise and persistence as a mean of uh, compensation for the inadequate of the formal organization in providing individual media satisfactions and what means of adding to the need satisfaction provided in formal members of organization. There is, yeah, if you have uh, a formal, if you work in formal organization and then it's a really strict, right? There's a responsibilities that you gotta do it. And there's your position is there, and then, but sometimes it's hard to regulate, and it's hard to, it's based on your work. And, but informal organization is give you more rooms, and you could, uh, uh, the in, informal organization provide kind of a, a more social uh, relation with the co-workers, and then they, there's a uh, work with uh, maybe there's a uh, resting uh, place, more cozy, and provide a lot of good things, and they can while they have lunch, and then while they have break, and they socialize with others, you know, different way. And less, uh, not a COVID power, and then, but there is a social control, so among the uh, relationship. It's, we cannot be, it's not visible, but yeah, we can uh, control people yeah, inside the boundary and there's a basic um, uh, relations and then a responsibility. And there is, yeah, why informal, yeah, uh, they use a really, communication is really important and they like the vine trees, the vine, you know, it's a uh, grapevine and then, well, not vine tree, grapevine and then just think about branches go all over the connected, right? That's what is here and then they connect it and like a system, a structure, a profile, what? Well, more support, right? That's a, yeah, that's an informal organization though. 
So nowadays, maybe older generations are really used to the law. Um, the former organization, and then they are struggling with the new generation, the millennials, and then Z. And then, then Z is really you know, grew up in formal and really kind of tension, and then what? Well, and they work, go into workplace, and it's hard to you know, adjust the formal organization. That's why they got to work a yeah, different way. How, for example, what is a common organization kind of wants to uh, accept uh, the, yeah, these yeah, uh, different um, uh, people and then how yeah, uh, the Gen Z workers have to adopt the different structure for their organization. And that's why um, Nowadays, it's not every organization, so there's a lot of uh, informal organizations, and, but one of the things is that uh, it's hard to, there is a social, social control, but if like, uh, we already under, yeah, understand the human nature, is what factors X and factor Z, and then uh, theory Z, X and Z is totally different, right? So. Yeah, we gotta know the basic you know, nature of a human being, and so informal leaders and then uh, leaders uh, theories, and they kind of enjoy kind of a reward and so work close with the work, yeah, worker coworkers, and then they have a lot of reward and privilege that they can enjoy, right? That's the informal leaders. Maybe I was in uh, college, uh, no, graduate school in Korea, and then usually to think about the, uh, the dean of the school, and they really were the suit. It's a hard to get along with the students, always there. But one, one, one day we had a new dean came from America, and then I know. He was the suit, and then still, yeah, I was still, yeah, I was sitting under the uh, grass and talking with my uh, friends, but the dean suddenly came to us and then sit down on the grass and was talking. So he was uh, shocked. He was, he was really shocked. And because these are coming out of different cultures. I grew up there like a culture. If you go to kind of a Korean big companies and it's like really, maybe it's a pub and there's a yeah, really, uh, usually like a Japan, yeah, Japan and Asian countries are really like a formal, yeah, formal so organization. But later on, they adopted yeah, a lot of different, you know, informal when you have the characteristic of organization in different, you know, a lot of different ways. And so informal organization is not always good. I already mentioned a little bit kind of a, a negative side and that should be called a detrimental. And sometimes if you don't control and the world, transmit the false information. Well, sometimes it gives up with too much freedom and there is no exact data and about, yeah, some information is going around. That is kind of risky. And they sometimes are really too comfortable, they don't want to change, move on. Right? That is a kind of resistant, yeah, resistant changes. And, Cause excessive conformity to the group norms. That one is sometimes there is a, a group norm is there, and then if you go and you gotta conform to the group norms, that's informal. Yeah. Just think about every that's a formal organization is a little bit it's a nice sort of structure that you gotta follow, right? So develop goals that complement with the formal organization organizational goals. Okay. 
little bit different way for how can you motivate the people and how can let them kind of uh, uh, goals that are different from your formal organization. So management is different. Well, what is the benefit of satisfying employees' social need, right? They can have more, you know, the work is a bit more good and associated with, with their peers or more, you know, and provide employees with the emotional, emotional escape, values, and the what? Uh, complement of formal organization. So there's a lot of things that uh, if the uh, whereas a formal organization can cannot do, that's the benefit. Like, you know, employees with emotional experience value, you know, values, and then they went uh, away to you know, other co-workers, but even though they see a kind of uh, risky, right? So we gotta know the uh, best way that how can, uh, it, it's not an age nowadays, and depends on the, yeah, your need, uh, depends on the leadership style, and depends on the school culture, and what kind of, yeah, uh, um, the leadership you can uh, take and then uh, use and I want you to think about what we talk about how can you uh, uh, apply actually in school setting in education uh, there is some studies out there, and then uh, one, you know, I gave you some idea here and there, and then think about how can you apply. So we consider school as an organization, it's a little bit different from uh, just uh, the other concept of schools. So how can you learn so with the principle that organization use it as school in which is a totally different yeah, goals and characteristics. Okay. And so, yeah, it's really important to know and how can we, what kind of leadership that we can use it and how can many such human relation, uh, rela relation in in as an education field. That is a kind of a uh, topic that maybe you can read through, but I'll give you a little bit insight, but I give you a basic idea about how uh, uh, we can uh, 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 use some theory that uh, outside it already there and then we can use a theory in the education environment. So human relations relations is very important even though it's yeah, any organization, not school organization, right? And but we gotta know the human nature, we gotta know the human motivations, we gotta know the basic ethics. Right? And that one shows yeah, kind of yeah, um, forms of uh, uh, school cultures. And I want you to see that kind of yeah, uh, transformational uh, uh, as a leadership for the uh, school, I think, yeah, school, school operations, and then uh, in, yeah, as a leader, and what kind of skill you have, what is the instructional management, and the team building skills, and Communication skills, a lot of things you need, even though you have vision and values and belief and the what understanding. With this on how can you apply and communicate with your yeah, teachers and students and uh, as parents, how can you uh, make a good outcome with the students, with the teachers, right? Um, I want you to kind of think about and read the book more. It kind of, it's not a, yeah, already talked about, I already talked about, but let me give you some insight and then, yeah. So if you have any question, and let me know, and I hope that you guys 
and they are have some idea about how can you manage the human relations. And